You are listening to Peak One Sports. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the lead off on the peak one sports network i'm ashton with tony sitting right across right on the other side of the screen from me um what's going on tony just another early saturday morning getting prepared for sports all weekend yeah and we are here to get you ready for your sports weekend um let's talk about we can start with nba all-star weekend in Indianapolis Indianapolis started uh, last night with the celebrity all-star game featuring uh, Micah Parsons CJ Stroud a bunch of other um, I know Jennifer Hudson was part of that Um, well this is something we kind of need to talk about so Stephen A. Smith was one of the coaches obviously opposite Micah Parsons and he was kind of like his cowboy hate like, I know he doesn't like the Cowboys, but I think it's more of a bit at this point. Like, he's – every time Micah touches the ball, he's like, just let him shoot, let him shoot. Well, you know? we're, 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 still t- we're still talking about him, so. Yeah. So, football I mean, over. you know, I, it's it's funny. Um, and then, anyways, so apparently during the practice of the Celebrity All-Star Game, whenever some of that takes place, Micah kind of challenged Stephen A. Smith uh, to come on and play basketball. And Stephen A. hurt his ankle. They thought he had broken it. He went to the hospital. Um, he was fine last night. He was walking. He, you know, everything everything was fine. Maybe a little bit of a limp, but not, nothing too bad. But uh, initial report initial reports show that uh, Micah Parsons crossed over Stephen A. Smith and broke his ankle. Not literally, but you know, uh, figuratively on the basketball court. Uh, but Stephen a last night when uh, he was being asked about his ankle said that he was just doing shoot arounds. There's a wet spot on the floor. He slipped and hurt his ankle. I'd heard the My- Micah Parsons crossover story like three or four times yesterday before I heard Stephen A's <laughs> account of the situation. That yeah. I heard the, uh, that Micah had crossed him over to, as well. Um, and I thought that was weird at first because I, I guess I didn't realize that Stephen A was coaching and not playing the game and not playing. Yeah, yeah. But at that time, I mean, I didn't realize that situation. I'm like, he's playing in the game because I, I, I just man, he, he doesn't seem like the he's an older guy, you know. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a guy that's going to be fit enough to go face off against a guy. I mean, Michael Parsons is a big dude, but he's an athlete all yeah. around. I mean, very, very outspoken. But too. he scored like. 37 points last night in that game yeah i mean it's it's a little <laughs> skewed they, they had a lot of gimmicks i thought it was pretty entertaining it was fun they had a uh, crunch time which everything every point scored was doubled so he had a couple of baskets there um i think he scored like the first 12 points on his teams uh in his team's game um so yeah if you're thinking 37 i mean again he was playing against some athletes some not um youtubers and and jennifer hudson looked pretty good she she's you know obviously not a professional athlete she looked like she did a pretty good job uh cj stroud was kind of the player on the other side to look at so i don't know there's the captain of the team or whatever uh Stephen a the coach and and 50 cent and little wayne were I, I don't know what their roles in the whole thing were but they were on the mic a lot like cheering for the other teams, like going against each other. So um, yeah. pretty fun for, for the first night, you know, you know before the real all-star basketball gets started. I, I, I know there wasn't a lot of hype up to this, this point. Um, you kind of forgot NBA all-star weekend was this weekend leading up to it. Uh, not a whole lot of coverage, but I think it was a solid first night. Yeah. And this is always the time for me that it really gets serious is after the all-star break for the NBA. I mean, I know there are the NBA purists that 
watch it from preseason on and are really locked in. Uh, this is the time when it gets serious, you know, and it's kind of like baseball as well after the All Star break. Yeah, you know, you really start to pay attention to the you know the conference and the the division races. Um, I think that's something that you're really going to start paying attention to now that you come down the back stretch. Um, All Star Weekend is a good time to to kind of celebrate that and break that, you know, come out with that. Uh, it's always a fun NBA weekend though that with the you know dunk contest, three point contest, all these celebrity games. They have like rookies games. Yeah, um, it's a lot of fun. I think all the festivities are more fun than the game itself. Uh, kind of, I mean, and I think baseball is the same way too. That it's you like the home run derby and the yeah. celebrity softball game more so than there's staples that have stuck <clears throat> around yeah. for a while. Like the, you know, we criticize the pro bowl. Um, not a lot of stuff sticks around. They change a lot. I mean, for good reason, it, football's so, so more, uh, much more of a physical sport. Whereas, yeah, the, the all-star game, they've started slacking off and not trying as hard, but you can still go out there and play basketball. Yeah. But dunk contest and three point contests have been around for a while. Um, home run derby has been around for a long time. The all MLB All Star Game pretty much started it all. Uh, you know, back in the day. <coughs> and um, yeah, I don't have that you know information tonight, in front of me, but I know it was one of the first ones. Yeah, tonight kicks off the three point contest. Uh, the Steph Curry dunk contest. So yeah, three point you got. Malik Beasley, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halliburton, Damon Lillard, Laurie Markinen, uh, Donovan Mitchell, Carl Anthony Towns, Trey Young. And Steph Curry goes off again. He's not in the <clears throat> official three point contest. He goes off against a W. What's her name? WNBA yeah. player. Um, they go head to head. Um, uh, and then the slam dunk contest uh, Jalen Brown. Uh, Jamie Jaquez Jr., uh, Mac McClung, which you can remember from last year's champion, yeah, from the G League. Yeah, the dunk contest is kind of you know obviously taking a hit compared at least a three point contest. You have the you know real stars of the game. Um, yeah. Dunk contest is kind of like they're taking the G League stars, the possible future stars. Um. I know everybody wants to see LeBron and KD and everybody yeah. in the dunk contest, which part of the problem with the all the dunk contest is you feel like you've seen everything now. Yeah, it's hard. You know, you 20, know 20 Vince years Carter ago. when he he revolutionized under the leg dunk, and it's like if you're not doing between the leg dunk, it's, it's like yeah. that's like a routine dunk. Yeah, I mean yeah. guys are doing that in games now. Uh yeah, it, it, it seems hard because what else can you come up with? How creative can you be? You have um, to keep pushing the limits. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, Dwight Howard away. jumped over a car. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of stuff you need. That's that's what you're looking for now, more so than this real creative, how can you move in the air dunk. I mean, you probably get a better overall dunk contest with these guys because, I, I don't know, they they can focus more on the dunk contest. Like, they can practice a little more. I don't think if LeBron's in a dunk contest... He might have his guys come up with a few dunks and he messes around with it. But I don't think he takes it as seriously as some of these other guys do. Um, yeah, some of these guys like Mac McClung, you know, is trying to get put on the map. Yeah, I I, I think quality-wise, it's probably more creative, maybe even better dunks because they've practiced. Obviously, you know, you put LeBron in there, he's a freak athlete even at his age. Uh, the, the only thing that, I mean, you're used to, you know, Michael Jordan, names like yeah. that in the dunk contest. You don't have that anymore, really. But I don't know that if you put, I mean, Luca's not really a big dunker, but uh, put some of the best dunkers that you can think of in there, in the contest, I don't know that they just run away with it. Like, you know, it's got to be creative dunking. I mean, it's more like an ath athletic type competition because who, who could even complete dunks like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were talking about NBA All Star Game and kind of the the proverbial kickoff to the second half. And I think you were talking about purists. I think just your casual fan as well. That's when they really start paying attention because now how it's set up is it's right after the Super Bowl's over, 
And that's when a lot of people really start ta- paying attention to basketball is when yeah. football is right now you have basketball <clears throat> and hockey going on. Baseball is about to start, but we'll get to that that's in a minute. Right. But, um, it's hard to compete with, with playoffs of any sport. Yeah. And when your regular season is during the playoffs of uh, the NFL, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think it's know, perfect timing right after the Super Bowl. Now you're like, okay, now I can focus on basketball and look, you have the NBA all-star game, all-star weekend. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, I think the timing of it's really good. You hit that, now you're down the back stretch. You're really locked in with basketball. Baseball, we'll get to it later. <clears throat> we'll we'll begin to start up here soon as well. But again, unless you're just that baseball purist that just tunes into every single game of your team, watches every pitch, you know, you're probably going to be locked in a little more on the NBA because you've got all this, you know, these races to the to the playoffs, and then you're going to have the playoffs and championship. Once that's over. You know, I don't know if the timing works out as far as All Star. Probably so, pretty close to NBA Finals, all baseball All Star break, and then you know now you're down the back stretch of baseball. Yeah, NBA Finals like mid June, um, and then early July is when you get the you know MLB All Star game. So a few weeks after. Um. Yeah, that's it. I obviously it's playing that way. It does a good job. I mean, for us, we're trying to pay attention to all sports all the time. But um, I think, you know, obviously you don't want to comp- compete against the NFL. The NFL used to kind of help out and say, hey, we're not going to do things games this night or certain things this night. But now the NFL just realizes it doesn't matter. They're going to win out anyways. Yeah. They can, you know, have their season opener in Brazil on a Friday. And, you know, who cares? Because um, I know um, MLB All-Star Game, there's, that's the uh, before, the day after and the day before, the only two days in this in, of the year that there's not a professional sport being played. I know they're the only sport going on at the time, but um, between all the four major sports, that's the only two days of the year that there is not a game played before and after the All-Star Weekend. I guess technically during it too, because there's only one game, but. um. So the full breakdown for today um, on NBA TV, 11 a.m. You can watch the all-star practice. And then at two, there's the, and we talked about this last year as well. I believe the HBCU classic. Go back to the practice Uh, for a second. Because the NBA all-star game now is basically practice. (laughs) So yeah. what, what happens with what at are you the practice, practicing? you know, you, you, yeah. it's Maybe like, Hey, we'll, we'll try for the first couple of minutes, but if you're going in there hard, we're just going to let you dunk, you know? And then at the end, it's like, just do your most creative dunk. Let Steph shoot from half court crap like that. Yeah. But you got the, uh, the HBCU classic. We talked about this last year. Um, I think this was a big hit. Um, you have Winston Salem State against Virginia Union. Okay. Um, that's good. Is that, get in that Indianapolis? On, yeah, you can get that on NBA TV, TNT, or ESPN today. Okay. At two. <clears throat> then at seven tonight, uh, Adam Silver has his his annual All Star Weekend news conference. Um, maybe some big news there. You might want to check that out. You can get that on NBA TV and the NBA app. Uh, and then at eight, the All Star Saturday Night festivities start, like we were just talking yeah. about. Starting skills off the competition, skill, yeah. skills challenge, the three point contest, and then like you mentioned earlier, uh, Steph against Sabrina and the three yeah. point challenge, and then the slam dunk to finish out the night, and then to finish out NBA All Star Weekend tomorrow at eight p.m. is the All Star Game on TNT. Um. Yeah, when um, what what do they do now? It's not is it the I may have missed you saying it the rookie challenge or it's the rising stars challenge. I know they changed that. It used to be rookies versus sophomores. It was that U.S. Was versus actually, world. That was actually last night. Okay, it was last night. What? How do they do that for? Because I know last year it stars. was like they rising stars. They did like four quarters, but each one was a game something like that. So they, they, they said like, okay, you won the first quarter. You and then won. at the end, yeah. if it was a tiebreaker, it would be like total points or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know how they did that. Um, obviously, you could see, you know, by the scheduling of that, it was at 9 p.m. last night. That that was uh, probably the, the least rated game. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and it was after the celebrity game on TNT, so it wasn't directly after on ESPN where everybody was already watching the celebrity game. So that's kind of where they. Yeah, I guess a bigger game. draw would probably be the celebrity game, and then if you're just already watching, which apparently I watched most of the celebrity game, and I didn't even realize that came on right after. But well, it came on on a different channel. It was on TNT oh. after. So well, there you go. I'm sure they talked about it, and I just it went over my head. I wasn't paying attention. I guess between all the networks that they're trying to get in with NBA TV, TNT, ESPN, that that they're trying to diversify this a little let's, bit. Let's just stop and thank the NBA that none of this was on a streaming service. Yeah. Or absolutely. exclusively on a streaming service. Because that seems to be like we had we talked about it before that that's kind of where everything's going. Um and you had mentioned Adam Silver earlier, and we'll talk about you know, Rob Manfred, the MLB commissioner here in a minute <clears throat> is, uh, is it just me or is Adam Silver like the most liked commissioner in professional I, sports, I major sports? Be. <clears throat> uh, cause it's kind of a thing, a gimmicky thing to, you know, boo commissioners and not like them. And they're just kind of, uh, but I think Adam Silver's, you know, not universally liked, but for the most part, from a fan standpoint, and a media standpoint, I think he's he's very well liked, you know. Yeah, I mean, we've probably as a commissioner, we've probably talked about him on this show more than any other commissioner. Yeah, uh, because of the good things. I mean, last NBA season, we we talked a lot about him, and you know, when he was dealing with the John Morant, uh, yeah, suspensions. That you know, I think he handled all of that very well. He seems to be very fair. Um. Man, it's it's hard to knock the guy. He just he does a lot of good things for the NBA, and that's usually it's it's kind of like being a referee. It, if nobody ever hears about you or hears anything in the news, it's usually a good thing. Yeah. Um, not to knock the other commissioners, but they, or I guess to knock them, but they, you know, had some unfortunate situations they had to deal with, and not a lot of people liked how they dealt with them. Um. You know, comparative just off the top of my head, like Ray Rice, Ezekiel Elliott, two completely different situations. And I realized they changed, you know, kind of changed the rules halfway through. Um, but when, when you make a decision and the public reacts to it and then you mm -hmm. change your decision, then that's kind of, uh, that kind of says all you need to know about yeah. it. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube page. Just hit that subscribe button. If you do like what you're watching, hit the like button. If you don't hit it twice, uh, this episode is brought to you by Betalytics. Use, uh, use Betalytics and don't bet with your gut. They have AI, uh, algorithms for player props, all, all kinds of jazz. Use promo code peak one for 25% off your account today. And uh, before we get to what we're talking about in baseball, sure. let's stick with basketball. Just a little quick uh, nugget here. Before you, before you get to that, I actually just came across this when you okay. were reading all that off. So we were talking about the streaming service, and thank you to the NBA for not doing that. Do we need <clears> to retract that? <clears throat> no, we don't. Okay. You can actually, if you do not have cable service, you don't have TNT, ESPN, NBA TV, or any subscriptions, you can watch the All Star Weekend for free on Fubo. That no other, no other. I know it's it's not even it, like they're exclusively being on normal TV. It's like no, we'll yeah. we'll do whatever we can to make you watch. Yeah, we want the viewership. We want to take care. You know, let's look at the viewership. We'll talk about it next week, or I'll, I'll be out next week. But we'll get this here in a couple of weeks. Let's compare yeah. the viewership of NBA All Star Weekend to the Pro Bowl. And we'll throw in MLB All Star Weekend, yeah. just kind of as a whole, the games themselves, because the NFL has their. I don't know if it's really the weekend, but it's they have a lot of events leading up to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Um. So we can kind of get similar numbers. Let's talk about that. See if them doing this and not being. I mean, not that NFL All you know Pro Bowl weekend isn't on streaming services. I don't know. I'm sure you can watch it on regular TV. I didn't watch any of it, but. You know, the NFL is just trying to push towards streaming services. Um, yeah. 
MLB, I know they use Apple TV for like some key Friday night games. I know those are exclusively on Apple TV when for those games. But yeah, hats off to the NBA. Yeah. Like they, little, yeah, they use soft clap for Adam yeah, Silver. Yeah, soft there. clap there. <clears throat> oh man. Okay. Last day we'll talk about college. Not even really college basketball. Just this one college basketball game. It's kind. Of, it's kind of interesting. So uh, Detroit, yet, yeah, March right. Madness is just, just around the corner, and you're not going to see either of these teams in March Madness. But uh, Detroit Mercy beat IUPUI. Don't I don't know what that stands for. I didn't look it up. I didn't care. They beat them uh, Wednesday night, eighty-one to sixty-six. Uh, before that, Detroit had been zero and twenty-six. Not a lot of good basketball being played in Detroit these days. Uh, but anyways, it was their first win. Um, at home, Detroit Mercy, I assume in Detroit, Michigan. They, uh, after that win, they had their one fan at the game storm the court to celebrate their one win. So congratulations to Detroit Mercy on now being one in 26. And IUPUI, what what are you doing? It was 88-61. Not that you're, you know, leading your conference, but what are you doing letting them blow you out? With one fan. Oh yeah, they're six and I mean I U P U I the Jaguars are six and twenty one, so they're not a powerhouse by any means. I mean, come on though. I I feel like that's like a trap game that the coach needs to be like, guys, they're zero and twenty six. Let's let's well, make sure so. we're not on ESPN the, for this. You look at the stat line in the one first half. Sports Network. Yeah, I mean, you look at the stat line in the first half. Uh, Detroit was up 44 to 29. So they came out and socked them in the mouth. And then the second half, they each scored 37. So they just got such a big lead. And then the game even back out in the second half. And the, yeah, I guarantee you they came into that one on an 0 and 26 team and said, Hey, we're, we got this. Now, one in 25, I get that. Just, you know, look to the next game, but you don't want that to be significant because I can guarantee you. On the leadoff, we're never going to talk about IUPUI again, ever. No. So the one time we brought you up was because you lost to the O and twenty. Because if it was the one in twenty five, they got their second win. We wouldn't be. We wouldn't care. We wouldn't talk about it. I mean, looking at the footage of that, the video, you know, the one fan running out. So, I mean, there can't be like fifty people in the in the stands, anyways. I mean, I've no, seen it, it looks high like school basketball games with more. It looks fans. like there, you know, there's more. <laughs> When you talk about the staff, just on the teams, the players, coaches, refs, there's more staff than there are yeah. people uh, there watching watch the, the game. game. Can you tell? Is that was that on TV? Obviously, not TV that we would have been able it to. Looks see. like it was maybe streamed somewhere. You know, they have their. Own I know, kind of like we have with the uh, Friday Night Football shout out. Yeah. It could have uh, also. I, I know ESPN does a job, a good job, like on their app of having just about anything imaginable. I know college football, pretty much any college football game you want to see, if you have ESPN Plus or whatever, you can watch it. That it may be something like that. Yeah, maybe so. It doesn't. Maybe not that game though. With as far, I mean, we're about to ready to start college um, conference tournaments, college football, yeah, and I mean, they have a combined six wins now, seven. Yeah, this really looks like a high school game. I mean, Detroit Mercy, I've you know never they may have a you know a high school looking and gym compared to down. and one fan runs out on the court. That's got to be like a parent. Which looks like somebody's dad. Yeah, that's got to be something like they're just a diehard Detroit Mercy Knights. Is that what they are? The Knights? Uh, yeah, I think so. Detroit Mercy Knights fan. Um, I like to think that guy, you know, went there, you know, went to Detroit Mercy in the 80s, maybe played for the, the basketball team, and he's just been like a season ticket holder his entire life. Yeah, they even sell you. season tickets, you know. Or you just pay eight dollars to get in the gate. Season yeah. big. So if you're on the cusp, if you're a high school kid on the cusp of making college basketball, go take a shout out to Detroit Mercy. You might get a spot. Yeah. 
Oh, man. Okay, baseball's back. Let's talk baseball. I know everyone wants to get into that. Uh, for a lot mm-hmm. of people, the end of NFL is the start of baseball season. We got spring training going on. Um, you know, here in Dallas, it's you know a lot of news about Corey Seager uh, had surgery. He might not be ready for opening day. Now Josh Young's hurt. A calf injury, we're not sure the – at this point, um, it's not widely known how long he's going to be out for, if he'll be ready for opening day or if it'll be an eight-week thing or whatever. Um, probably a strained calf, which you see a lot of times early on. I mean, I know these guys are supposed to keep themselves in shape and be ready, but it, it's different when you get on the field and you start doing things. It's um, – you're going to, you know, baseball is very prevalent with, with strains and pools and calves and, you know, yeah. Um, just from going, yeah, you work out every day, you do whatever to now you're going to go actually play baseball. It's a big difference. And baseball is one where like, yeah, you get those injuries in basketball, but you're kind of moving the whole time. Baseball, you could be standing there, you know, you try to stay loose, but you can just dart and, you know, go after a a ground ball or you get a hit and you're rounding first or whatever. Um, a lot of crazy stuff. Any, any other big injuries? Uh, Phillies, uh, Rice Hoskins tore his ACL, oh. his left knee ACL. That's the on first night. week of spring training. And yeah. Just like you said, on a non-contact play, uh, down in Clearwater. <clears throat> uh, it looks like Verlander, uh, you know, his shoulder, he's, he's behind schedule. Yeah, you see a lot with with, with uh, pitchers, especially Verlander, who's getting older. And you know, I think that's you know going to be some of the questions. You know, just to jump right in with the Rangers this season, uh, that probably starts them the season not in the top of the AL. Uh, I mean, you, you have know, Degrom that may not even they, pitch till yeah. They're and saying they, August they, at best, but it might be yeah. like postseason if the Rangers make the postseason. Scherzer's probably what not till June. Yeah, and and can they stay healthy with what they have? And yeah, we, I mean they have, have great defense, they have great bats, and they have a pretty good rotation as is. Uh, it, yeah, can they? You know, they still have time to make moves. You'll see. There's a lot of guys still out there. Um, yeah, I think the Astros probably come in. Obviously, you know, favorites. Um, they're favorites. Uh, the Orioles right there as well. Um, you well, know, the Astros Yankees. are favorites to win the division. Yeah, Orioles, you know, the Yankees Orioles are, are probably right up there. Yeah, Yankees. Yeah, they're coming out saying moves. that they're hell bent on winning a title in twenty twenty four. They're they've gone all in. They, you know, they've got. Wait, you know, is that Jerry Jones all in, <laughs> or is that real all in? Yeah, Yankees, Cowboys, kind of same comparisons. The Yankees haven't been to a World Series yeah. since two thousand nine. So I know it's not the Cowboys since ninety six, but still, I mean. Yeah, I think the uh, you know the Yankees are always a team though you have to watch. You know they're they're one that's going to sneak up on you. They they have a stacked roster. You know they struggled last year, but gosh, they are just so stacked. Yeah, I mean obviously disappointed last season. You thought they had a pretty good roster, a lot of stars. I mean usually the Yankees are more top heavy in roster. Um, but I mean similar. But, you know to they also they the brought Padres. in one. They brought brought in one Soto. Yeah, the Yankees did. So, man, this is. I mean, they are all in. Yeah, you know, they I mean, everything they can to build the roster to do. This it. is going to be more than likely bearing just big disappointment or injury. This should be a Yankees Dodgers World Series this year. Yeah, maybe for the next three or four years. You know, with, yeah, with Otani going over there. I mean, it's. Uh, I know. It's good for baseball to get those it, those notable names back in. It's good. Nobody World wants series. that. It's I fun mean, to see the you know the Rangers, the outliers, the, yeah. the Astros in recent years have been there. The, you know, the D backs. When but, you look at it, though, it was one of the worst rated, uh, the least watched World Series because it yeah. was diamond. And not that I mean, you don't have the national prevail. It's not that. Anybody, I'm sure a lot of people had a team to cheer for that she didn't want to watch because it was the Diamondbacks and Rangers. Yeah. Um, Yankees, Dodgers, just, I mean, obviously, what, you have 30 million people, 40 million people just that live in New York and L.A. area. 
Yeah. Um, you know, you still but have, you know, like 15. have a national draw as well. Yeah, they, they have a national draw. That's the big difference. I mean, Dallas, Fort Worth, 8 million people. I think Phoenix, Arizona, you know, that big metropolitan area has probably got a couple of million people too. Um, and, and I'm sure in those regions, they were good, but it was, and, and you just have to have time to build it up. I think the Astros, obviously there was a lot of hate there and what we actually have um, that to talk about when, when we talked about Rob Manfred, that after a while they started getting that national draw because yeah. they've been to the playoffs seven straight times, you know, three world series appearances, mm-hmm. uh, countless ALCS appearances. And it, it takes time because these are two you know, diamondbacks and Rangers were two franchises that, uh, nobody expected them to be there last exactly last. you have things like that happen where other rangers will make it or the diamondbacks will make it or you know like this year we were hoping the lions would make it something like that but when <clears throat> both and i i think it was very unfortunate for diamondbacks and rangers fans because as a rangers fan i don't care if it's a least rated i've had astro people start to say well yeah but it's the least rated world series like okay why does that uh, it, does it not count you know, yeah, you cheated and it counted, and they didn't take it away. But our World Series doesn't count because only a few mil- million people Nobody watched it. it. It didn't matter. It was unfortunate for both sides. <clears throat> yeah. uh, it was unfortunate for baseball. It was unfortunate for baseball too. That like for the Diamondbacks, it would probably have been better for them if they, you know, d- despite who would win or the outcome, it would be better if they played the Astros. Yeah, uh, last year or the Orioles. I mean, not that the Orioles are a big draw, but they're an older team and they have been winning recently. Um, the same for the Rangers. It probably, I don't know that they win the World Series, but it probably been better if they would have gotten the Phillies. Just yeah. so you wouldn't have that hangover. Because it's unfortunate for both teams, for baseball, that that's just the way, you know, it happened. Because NFL doesn't care. I mean, they care about ratings, but it's like it doesn't A low-rated game blows out NBA, MLB, NHL every day of the week anyway that a low rated world series does you know people start going well, what does this mean for the sport what is it it's like chill out it was just two teams you know you get yankees and dodgers most as as much as most people would hate it it would get some ratings national draw like i don't like either team i don't necessarily dislike maybe the yankees i don't really like all that much but i'd watch it you know i'd still yeah. watch it because you know if it's Yankees Dodgers just because it's like okay this is historic I kind of want to be a part of watching this what if this is one of those World Series and it gets to be Yankees and Dodgers the same way with Celtics Lakers yeah um Cowboys Steelers were you know were kind of like that in the old days too um you know with that dislike did you see this the story about the dislike of the uh the new uniform the Nike. Oh, here we go. We're going to have to start bringing back the thread. <laughs> but did you see these where the, I guess, Nike went with a different style on the jersey? Oh, yeah. The Cardinals? Is it the Cardinals? Uh, I, did see I some... mean, all the all the teams are this way. The Sox. Like, uh, are you talking water. about like how they look so cheap? They've yeah, gone I with much less the like the stacked trim that you would see, like where you have a base color and then a secondary color. Yeah, and a it third looks like color, a jersey like maybe you buy at Walmart. Yeah, they're very and the the print's much smaller. It's much more plain and simplified. Um, yeah, when you compare them, it's it's hard to explain. But when you compare them side by side and you're looking at them, yeah, they they do look much. I mean, you got these big athletes, right? Baseball players are big guys, and you know these small numbers and small, you know, plain lettering. Man, it, they yeah, they don't find look good. What what team? What teams were we talking about? Had the worst ads on their jerseys. I know the Mets were up there, but they kind of changed it where it, it matched at least. Yeah, was, the Astros had one on there. Yeah, the, uh, so, Reds. so let's find that in these cheap jerseys. It's just going to look like a big discount store jersey with ads on it. And Yeah, you're right. Material. You know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, because I know the the Mets did fix it. I still think it looked ugly having that patch, like that rectangle patch over your pinstripes. Yeah. Uh, but I believe it was like red when they started. It just looked awful and i think they changed it to to make you know be a little bit um blend in a little bit more but the reds were one too um at what point to these 
I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's a league wide thing. You can't just go get your own stuff made. Or no, maybe you could seek that out, but you're kind of like get night. out of the. Like the you Cowboys know, are um, Miller Light, and the NFL is Bud Light. So the. But I can remember back when the in the NFL, especially, and you know, I guess the NBA was probably this way as well. I think Majestic always had baseball for a long time. Yeah. But in the NFL, every team had their own Adidas or Nike or Reebok, or and then I think eventually Reebok came in and took over the. They were like the one of the first to say, "Hey." And they did, you know, we're going to have all the NFL. They had it for a while before Nike yeah, came so in. So do the Yankees are all on this too? They don't have their own side deal going on? No. Okay. No, it's all league-wide. Yeah, it must be like a rule they have to to go by then because it seems like the Yankees could go out and get their own, keep the, you know, yeah. make keep more of their – because it's probably like a shared profit deal with, you know – I would say – Jersey sales. If you don't – Look up these designs if you don't like it. I would rush out and buy the ones that are on sale from last season. Yeah. Uh, which is what I would do because these, yeah, these are horrendous. The, Nike did a terrible job on these, which you have seen a lot of hate and a lot of knock on Nike recently for the designs they've come out with. Um, like within the, you know, the NFL threads they've been coming out with have been, you know, there's been some, some questions about if they left something on the table with them, you know, with the Cardinals that were very plain, the, you know, the Falcons, there were a lot of teams that they were just, they, they didn't do a lot with them. I mean, looking at some of these, it's like the place we buy our jerseys, that Chinese website. Like yeah. Those are way better than these and probably a lot cheaper. Are these jerseys still a hundred dollars? Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. I they, mean, they, these kind of like I'm not feeling it, holding it in my hand and feeling it, which makes does make a big difference. But it, it does look like a Walmart jersey where you go and you buy your twenty five dollar jersey mm-hmm. from Walmart because you're going to a game and you have to wear a jersey, you know. Yeah, why they felt compelled to make these changes is is beyond me. See and. Purist and not even purist. I'm kind of one. I'm not a purist at all. Um, I like growth and change, but baseball, it's kind of like, let's see what it is first because baseball is one of those things. Like, let's try to keep it. Um, Cause it's one where uh, if you see like an old baseball game or something, it's, it, it hits different than seeing an old football game or an old basketball game. Yeah. So if you're making a change and you do something like this, it's um it's going to hit differently, but I do know that side note, I don't know if this is a Nike thing, but the Yankees have decided to get rid of the white outlining around their jerseys, so it's like pre-70s uniforms. I don't know if most people will notice, but it's like their uniforms they've been wearing forever pre-1970s. Or because it on New York on the on their gray uniforms, New York it had where it says black. It, uh, New a York white black outline. It has a white outline, and they're taking that away. I don't know if that's it, in that case. It does kind of make it look more cheap, but for the Yankees, I'm thinking that's okay. It's a more vintage. It's vintage. It's Yankees. Yeah, it's, Yankees. Vintage it's not like, um, you know, Arizona <clears throat> has has a wild color scheme where if you take away if, an if outline, go- it doesn't. It makes it look cheaper, but doesn't necessarily make it look better. Yeah, if you're going to go with that monochromatic look and you're just doing a single color number, that looks less cheap. It looks like it was you were trying to go for that effect. Then what they're doing is just making the numbers smaller and making the outlines for each number smaller, like a smaller trim. Yeah. It looks cheap to me. Like you're trying to save money somewhere versus going with these nice thick outlines. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I don't know if if there's going to be enough backlash where they would make any changes next season because th- they're not changing it this year. This is you're stuck yeah. with it. Yeah, I don't. It, it, it's kind of a thing where, yeah, backlash isn't necessarily something in this situation because you're going to change it every year anyways to some extent. Uh, maybe not a lot of changes where they probably don't have to be pressured to do it. They say it didn't yeah. work this year. People didn't like the jerseys. They looked cheap. They didn't you know sell enough for that price. Yeah, that um, outside of, you know, actually it may not, but the Yankees and Dodgers go and 
you know, do really good, make it to the World Series, you have that much more influx of jersey sales. And, you know, we saw it here in Texas where, you know, the Rangers jersey sales apparel skyrocketed. Now, imagine Yankees and Dodgers being really successful, possibly going to the World Series. It would, uh, you know, it it would affect baseball a heck of a lot more. Yeah. And maybe it just kind of gets lost in the thing like, yeah, we're not going to change it because it didn't matter anyways. We still sold more than we have in a long time. Yeah. Um, Sticking with baseball to to close it out, we have uh, Rob Manfred, the baseball commissioner, announces that uh, his tenure as MLB commissioner will end in January 2029. That's when his current term is scheduled to end anyway, so he's just not going to seek to renew it I, I guess the owners vote on it or whatever uh, and he's That's been commissioner true. since 2015 so he's been commissioner about 10 years so you got about five more years of him so he's making an assumption that he doesn't get voted out in five, the next five years yeah I mean it would have to be really bad to for them a to lot do can that. happen in five years yeah no a lot can happen in five years but it's it's not like hey we good with him do we want to hold the vote it's it's like there has to be a reason yeah. to go because like i said his tenure it already ends in 2029 so uh you don't really call it an election per se but you know it it'd be like the president like i'm not gonna have to be voted back in yeah yeah because he was just voted back in here a few mm-hmm. i don't i don't know it just happened i want to say in 2022 or 2023 um uh to extend i think it was extending i don't know if they do 10 years the exact same way i think they just extend them or, you know, it's not like the same um, term limit or term length. Uh, I don't believe. I think th- they just voted to extend it to 2029 after this past one. And yeah. a lot of people are kind of excited, but then you're like, that's still five years away. Six, five, yeah, five years away, January 2029. Um, But he's gone through a lot of situations that um i don't i don't know i'm not really defending him but a a lot of tough situations that there aren't really right and wrong things to do um maybe the best thing was he was able to do is is, as as commissioner was play baseball in 2020 yeah um he was able to get a season together even if it's just that short and 60 game season um a lot of controversy uh, controversial situations in his tenure as well. Uh, Houston Astros sign stealing scandal was then, and you know he made the decision not to take away that title. And I know a lot of that was tied around um, the players saying, "Hey, we'll talk. We'll say whatever you want, but you can't take away. You know, we'll we'll go on record if you don't take away the title." And um. I don't really care one way or another because that, what does that change? Like graphics saying the Astros have won two world series or one world series, you know, that's it because most people are going to think what they want to think. Um, I was pretty strong earlier when I said, Hey, you cheated in accounting, you know, being a little, a little more obnoxious. Not that that's not what they did, but I'm not going to say, no, the Astros have one world series title. I still say, you know, they have two, who cares? I don't, yeah. Of course, it didn't affect the Rangers that much. Rangers weren't contending back then. But uh, I know a lot of people didn't like it. I mean, if you're a Yankees fan or who did they beat in the World Series? Was that the Philly? No, they beat the Phillies last time. Who'd they beat? They lost to Washington. Who'd the Astros beat in the World Series, that first one? 2017. Uh, I don't know. Dodgers, right? Dodgers. <clears throat> Maybe. Yeah, they beat the Dodgers. Um, so if you're a Dodgers fan or I know a Yankees fan who they beat in the, the ALCS that year, you're probably not happy, obviously not happy with that decision. Um, but that was one. And then uh, relocating the 2021 All-Star game from Atlanta. I know um, I'm not going to get too much into that. It's real political, but he went out of his way to to go do that. And I think that's one, he was probably being pressured to do it one way or the other. But, yeah, you know, I. I think unless there's honestly, I think if there's real reasons to do it like safety reasons. Sure. But you should probably 
stay out of decisions like that just for your own popularity. Because in that situation, I, I understand he doesn't do anything. He has people mad at him. He does do something, you know. Uh, but those are some of the controversial takes from his, I'll say, first 10 years in tenure because he still has five more. So yeah. who knows what happens between now and then. Yeah, I mean, he's arguably the most hated commissioner in sports. I mean, he's neck and neck with Roger Goodell. Yeah, I mean, Roger Goodell has just kind of gotten, it's just a joke now. Um, not that he's not a viable commissioner. I think Roger Goodell's fine, whatever. He's made some weird choices, but I think like, disliking him i think it's more just a game now where in the nfl draft you come up there it's tradition to boo him now roger goodell's just at a different level i'm sure if you pulled people they probably said he would say he would they don't like him but i think he doesn't get his feelings hurt like rob manfred yeah it's way worse and rob manfred makes like laughable decisions and comments and it's like like really like i mean you saw it in the world series when he took the stage and they booed like he almost got his feelings hurt over over that yeah it um yeah like le- almost level a uh, Big Twelve commissioner yeah he won the Longhorns one um the Big Twelve championship and it's like you just Roger Goodell's a pro he just ignores it he doesn't even yeah. acknowledge it he just smiles when it happens yeah, it doesn't break character at all it's just what you know whatever and uh, yeah and it was interesting because maybe I I haven't watched a Super Bowl trophy presentation in a while because I watched when they did it for the Chiefs just this last Super Bowl and Roger Goodell wasn't even up there. No. And I wonder is like, is that normal? Is he trying not to get booed or what? I don't I have no clue what why he wasn't surely he was at yeah. the Super Bowl, right? I don't remember I don't under no I don't even remember seeing him during the Super Bowl, them cutting to him at all. But yeah. You know, you're right is I mean, what do you think you the commissioner of your sport should be the one handing off the yeah. championship trip. I mean, we were talking about like, he just doesn't let it bother him. So surely it has nothing to do with they're going to boo him or whatever. He doesn't care. I mean, he, at that point they just up. wouldn't have him come out and do NFL draft stuff, you know? Yeah. Maybe he was throwing a bang in a Super Bowl party. He couldn't miss. Hanging out with Rob Manfred. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, Rob Manfred is, is, I can't even remember the top of my head. I know I've I've retweeted a lot of stuff. He he's a little more, I don't want to say silent, but a little more real in now. But he would make comments on, you know, it would comment on players' comments or situations. And it's like, why do you and not like nor you know, we we talked about Roger Goodell with Ray Rice and Ezekiel Elliott and things like that. Not not situations he had to make decisions on. Like he would make a comment about somebody said, I can't remember the, but it, it was basically, um, uh, resting, you know, like wanting not to play a certain game. And I know it was a prime yeah. time game. You know, a lot of what the NBA, NBA goes through and he had, the player had tweeted or talked about it. I mean, I wish I didn't know we were going to talk about this. So I didn't think about it to look it back up, but tweeted, says something about it. And Rob Manford was asked in an inter- radio interview, and more or less called him a pansy or something like that. And it's like, you're the commissioner of major league baseball. And, and there are <clears throat> yeah. countless other situations like that. It's not even just his decisions he dealt with. It's he's, he's very disliked for, you know, a lot of stuff and you know, it's a hard job. I, I, I don't know how Adam silver is able to stay liked like that. I, I, I think it's a no win situation job. I mean, other than you get paid a ton of money. Um, but I think you're there to pretty much keep everything in place. So by default, you're going to be disliked. Yeah. But uh, I think Adam Silver does a great job of growing the game in the NBA. And um, I think he's a player if, commissioner. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And really, that's what you're supposed to be. I know it's structured style is more like the owners, but it's really like the commissioner against the owners. And, and I think that might be what Roger, De- Roger Goodell gets flack for yeah. is that he seems like he's for the owners and maybe he is more for the owners. I know the owners vote you in and, and keep you in. Um, but yeah, I think Adam Silver uh, is definitely more of a player's commissioner is what you're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, 
and you know R- Rob Manford has tried to elevate the game and push it forward and that's hard with baseball like we said you add a pitch clock you know from a, a fan standpoint of watching the game at home that's actually not not it wasn't actually bad I'm not, again I'm not a purist it, you know the, the pace was up you know watching a baseball game at home is much more boring than being there in person it's it's a lot funner and being at a game with a pitch clock is kind of lame because it, it just goes by way too quickly yeah and, and I guess a different if you're if you're at a baseball game on a Tuesday and you're like we just need to go home and work the next day kids have school or something um it helps for that but I, I know when you change things in, in baseball like we said earlier it's it's completely different than the other sport because it's more of a pure sport it's a much older league than the other leagues uh but adam silver's like on another level take you know really moving the game forward moving the league forward yeah um as you can see like nba all-star weekend we have you know the best shooter, three point shooter in the NBA versus the best three point shooter in the WNBA. There's like all kinds of stuff moving around. Yeah, he's finding around. ways to draw to expand the crowd. You know, you've you've seen NBA. I mean, the NFL try to do that with the younger generation with the Toy Story game, the uh, Super Bowl on televised on Nickelodeon yeah. with all the graphics. Uh, you know, maybe trying to diversify the nba more where you you're bringing in more of a, a female viewership that you know that would want to follow that, that maybe yeah. follow you nba a little bit yeah and i know baseball i mean that's part of like the pitch clock is hey we're trying to speed the game up yeah be you know the younger generation just shorter attention spans we've talked about another um other episodes like how content is taken in mm-hmm. and we'll even we'll even talk about it on here like our content is definitely most of our views most of our content viewed here on peak one sports is through reels that that's how lots of people want to watch um you know it's it's like tenfold more people wanting to watch reels and highlights and i know i don't know how landon does it but uh your son but i know kids nowadays don't necessarily want to sit down and watch games that often they'll they'll just watch the highlights because they'll take the the whole game and clip it down to highlights and put it on youtube i know youtube tv if you uh have a certain team as your favorite you click on the game it'll say how do you want to watch it do you want to catch up with highlights do you want to watch it live you want to start over or whatever um and i think it's just it's just different uh generational like we'll just sit down and watch the game you know yeah we we like watching the game and if you want to watch it from behind and watch and that, highlights and then watch clips and then <clears throat> sure and the numbers showed with the nba i mean with the uh, mlb last year that ratings were up yeah, yeah they were they up and better and, with, you know the average game was game. A, a, exactly and so i'm saying i'm i'm not a hater of it i just know it got a lot of hate and that's you know something and, I I think think, and there's a lot the more play- changes coming yeah the by the time years. the playoffs came that we really didn't know notice the pitch clock. We didn't notice, you know, that like early in the season you noticed it, and as the season went on, you really didn't notice it as the players understood it better. Yeah, I watched a game on a it was a, a, probably MLB Network or something, and I did notice like look going back and looking, I'm like, man, the pitcher's just taking forever to go, and that's what most of it was. Like even pitchers said, like some came out against it, but they were like. Most of the time, I'm pitching the ball anyways with like five, six seconds left. It's not really getting close up to me, but I know I can't just walk around the mound, yeah, stall things like that. Which I, I I'm in agreement with. I you know I don't think you should do. You know, if you are a pitcher who just takes longer in general, um, and you're you know throwing the ball with one second left every time, I think that can can be a nuisance and i think that could really affect a game but in general like if you just have that mindset like would yeah. you gotta keep things moving i don't think it really affects it much and some pitchers are like that anyways where they they have a pace they want to keep and they're not going to stall and slow down they want the ball right back and they're going to keep that rhythm yeah going. They, yeah they did a study pitchers, saying that it, it really did mad. like it obviously made it much quicker but for the <clears throat> average pitcher it didn't really matter like obviously they pitched quicker and got in a quicker pace because of the clock and they could see the clock 
But yeah. like I say, in general, it didn't affect as there were, weren't a lot of pitching violations uh, no. as many as everyone thought there was going to be. I mean, probably more with players not stepping into the box at the proper time yeah. was more of an issue than the actual pitchers and, side of it. And like I said, I'm not, not necessarily against it. it. It was a better experience watching a game on TV. But going to the game, I went to one game last year, and I'm like, it, it went by way too fast because I like to enjoy being at a baseball game, and that may not be the same for everyone. Um, that they enjoy the quicker game, they enjoy like, hey, I get to go to a baseball game, and I'm home by nine thirty. Yeah, you know, it's not whatever, something like that. I don't give us your thoughts. Let us know if <clears throat> uh, your thought on all the commissioners. Are we wrong? Is Adam Silver more hated than we think he is? But not not more than Rob Manfred. I know that's true. Or definitely not Roger Goodell. Um, but yeah, go ahead, comment down below, send this to your friends, you know, all that jazz. Go ahead and subscribe if you're listening on on your podcast platform. Thanks. Go ahead and follow us if you don't already. Um, but guys, hope we got you ready for your sports weekend. And until next weekend, we'll see you later. See you.